Hello. <coughs> Imagine uh, you are in a meeting. Now you are in a meeting and uh, someone in a position of authority wants you to write something. There are other people in the meeting. You're all sitting in a very corporate kind of a situation where and uh, you are supposed to take out uh, your pen and uh, take down some notes. Now, now imagine you taking out a pen, a fountain pen, which will be a kind of a culture shock for the rest of the people because they will either be keying it in in their uh, you know, digital devices or be using those use and throw dot or ballpoint pens. The moment you take out a fountain pen, you set yourself apart. Now that's number one. Now, if you want to take this farther, you take out a pen which becomes a kind of a conversation piece. A conversation piece in the sense, you take out a pen, you unscrew the cap, then you screw it back in the, and when you unscrew the cap, nobody can see the, uh, you know, the nib because it has a vanishing tip name and you screw back uh, the, the cap at the bottom of the barrel or the bottom of the uh, pen and your, uh, your nib slips out of the pen and you start writing. What you are doing is you are deliberately slowing down things and when you deliberately do that and you know, you kind of take charge of the situation because when you uh, normally people will wait for you if you are and you are not doing it uh, consciously in the sense that it's not that that you are focused on delaying thing. It's not a delaying tactic. It's something that you are doing naturally, something that our fathers and our forefathers were doing. And unfortunately, we have sped up to such an extent that what you are doing, what was normal, is today looking unnatural, kind of. And it is this uh, analog uh, use or this going back to the analog or to the using of a fountain pen that sets you apart. Now that's first part of the tale. The second part is about the pen because this is a particular pen and when you use that, it's a kind of a conversation starter because whoever else is there would either look at the pen directly or look at it from the side of their eyes but nobody can ignore it. The pen that I am talking about is of course a Mobla Bohem. A Mobla Bohem uh, is, as you know, is the pen that I was talking about. See what you do is you open the uh, cap. When you open the cap, you cannot see the nib or the nib unit because this is, uh, this is a retractable nib pen. You keep the cap back into the pen and the nib slides out. Now the good thing about, uh, okay, before I get into that, I should tell you that this is an example of the lens to which the Germans go so far as engineering is concerned. This is one of the reasons that makes a mobla a mobla. Uh, if you look at this pen, you will see that from wherever you start screwing this nib back into the uh, barrel, it will always be in alignment with the nib. This, this clip will be in alignment with the nib. That's number one. Number two is, how do you, you know, this is a pretty small pen as you can see. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is, I'll show you another Mobla. I'll uh, show you, this is, I believe, a Star Walker, yes. This is a Star Walker and this is the Bohem. So you can see that the Bohem is considerably smaller 
though uh, if you look at these two pens, they are more or less of equal girth. And uh, <coughs> it, you know, all the, uh, all the accoutrements, the accessories, the snow capped peak here, the you know, uh, uh, Mobla written, and all, all, all these things are uh, the standard ones. All of you know, I won't get into it. But what I want to say is the way this pen uh, is inked, that's also uh, very, very, uh, uh, how do you put it? Uh, 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 very special in the sense is you open it here and if you, if you roll this, then the cartridge comes in. This doesn't have a converter because this doesn't have such a uh, space in the pen. And so this is the cartridge which rolls out if you uh, turn the pen in a particular manner and this is uh, how it locks back. What we will do now is show you writing samples. This is one of my favorite pens. A, this is a Mobla. B, unlike the 149 or most Mobla pens, this is not a huge German pen. Uh, this is small and cute and something that easily slips into your pocket. It's unobtrusive and it's, 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 it's a sheer delight carrying it on. Number four, of course, this is a conversation starter. Wherever you go, people look at it and say, what kind of a pen is that? Number five is that, you know, this is one pen that if you have a lot of time in your hand, you can spend hours just looking at this pen. Just looking at this pen and wondering at the marvel. That's German engineering. I mean, and you keep thinking, why can't we Indians make pens like this? I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, the Germans have made this, they've perfected it. The Chinese have copied it. And we Indians can't still, forget about copies, we can't even make a pen. You know, we can't even think in these terms, in uh, you know, such engineering terms. So this is a pen that uh, kind of compels me to talk to myself, to think about a lot of things, to, you know, just make your thoughts wonder. But more than everything else, this pen gives me hours at an end of writing pleasure of, uh, you know, you take this out and uh, since it has a cartridge, since uh, it's, you don't have to carry ink, uh, even if you are traveling, when I'm traveling, I mostly carry this pen I sometimes, and the cartridges, so it's very easy. And, uh, and you know, you can write miles, you can write miles and you can see your thoughts being translated onto paper. You can see your thoughts taking shape, crystallize as the ink dries on paper. And it is a pleasure writing with you. Believe me, uh, take my word for it, it is a pleasure. And I'm sure that you guys will sooner or later try this out.